as we begin to get into the conversation of like, how do you optimize hormonal function? How do you, how do you live a life that is in balance with not falling into hormonal fatigue? I really love looking back at the elements. The elements are earth, air, water, and fire. Earth is minerals and nutrition. Air is oxygen. Uh, and so people need more oxygen. Water, of course. And I really like Dr. Collins' work about the structured water and how important that is and how that regulates intracellular water. And then fire. And I look at fire as, as sunshine. Fire is our, um, is our connection with uh, light. And, and any one of the deficiencies of these elements, in the end, if you're living a lifestyle that's depleting any one of these elements faster than you're building them up, it is statistically guaranteed that you will eventually reach exhaustion. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Hilda Labrada Gore. This is episode 208, and our guest is Dr. Timothy Weeks. Timothy joins us today from Ohio, where he is a holistic chiropractor who specializes in using applied kinesiology, nutrition, and other alternative treatment methods. Timothy is the author of Whole Body Health, and he has a profound understanding on how the body works and what leads to dysfunction and poor health. Today, Timothy explains how stress is actually at the root of all disease in our modern world. He addresses the stress that we are under on a daily basis, both external and internal, from our challenging workloads to family relationships to social media pressures and more. He broadens our understanding of the phases of stress, how pushing through stress, as we all do far too often, to the point of utter exhaustion, undermines our health, and he offers methods to reduce stress and get back to whole body health. I can't wait for you to hear his tremendous insights. First, a quick thank you to our sponsors, New Trends Publishing. Buy amazing books on diet and health at newtrendspublishing.com. New Trends is the home of Sally Fallon Morell's seminal book, Nourishing Traditions, as well as her latest books, Nourishing Diets and Nourishing Fats. Go today to newtrendspublishing.com for these and many other amazing books on diet and health. And Ancestral Supplements. This episode is brought to you by grass-fed colostrum by Ancestral Supplements. Colostrum is mother's first milk, fundamental nourishment that provides all the essentials to thrive as a healthy animal in nature. It is loaded with immune and growth factors and protective proteins. Go to ancestralsupplements.com and order yours today. You'll find a range of products made from New Zealand sourced nose to tail, organ meats, bone marrow, and colostrum in simple, convenient gelatin capsules. Ancestral supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Timothy. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I understand you went through a horrible accident when you were about 10 years old, and that kind of shaped the trajectory of your life. Can you tell our listeners that story? Sure. Uh, I was on my way home from basketball camp, and unfortunately, um, an elderly woman who was driving didn't see me and ran me over, and my body got stuck underneath the car and I was dragged for about 50 yards. And um, I spent two to three weeks in the hospital. And when I finally recovered to the onlooker, it seemed like I had recovered, but to me, I knew something was wrong. I just didn't feel well anymore. And over the uh, coming years, I was diagnosed with ADHD. I had irritable bowel syndrome. I started dislocating joints. My teeth and my bones became incredibly brittle. I broke my right arm four times. Um, I broke all of my front four teeth. And I just knew that I wasn't healthy anymore. And so I think like many of us who become sick, we, we look for answers wherever we can find them. And so that's how I initially got introduced to first chiropractic and then nutrition. And then finally, the Weston A. Price Foundation. Well, it sounds traumatic, obviously. And 
Were you alone in your search for health or did your parents also recognize something's wrong here? No, my, my, my mom's a nurse and she loves to research. And so her whole life, she's been looking for answers. And same with my father, he left medicine, traditional medicine, and went into holistic medicine about the time that I was in high school. And so I feel like both of my parents have been seekers of truth. And so it's, it's been very advantageous to be surrounded by people who are looking for the answers. And so in that way, I've been ext- extremely blessed. Absolutely. And so what changes did you start to notice as you sought out these health answers? Well, the first thing that I realized for me was that my body was twisted and that's how I got introduced to chiropractic. But these principles, they they slowly come to us. And the next major principle that I became innately aware of, uh, probably 20 years ago now, was that sugar was very, very bad for me. And I realized that I had something that I came to refer to as carbohydrate intolerance, where when I ate sugar, I didn't feel well. And so it took years for me to begin to understand the whole blood sugar, cortisol, adrenal fatigue aspect of this. But first, first it was the um, first was a structure and then sugar and then hormonal health was a huge learning step for me, beginning to understand how to repair hormonal exhaustion. And, and the story that I, I, I loved was the story of Hans Selye, um, who's, who's considered the father of stress in this country. Back in the 1960s and 70s, he, he said that there was three phases of stress. And I think many of your listeners can probably relate to this. Phase one is where something happens to us. And it can be a slow injury of the daily grind or too much of the wrong foods, or it can be, in my case, you know, one major trauma. And uh, what's supposed to happen is we, we have the stress response and we, we recover. And our stress hormones goes up, they, they react, and they come back down. And then he, he, he talked about the resistance phase. And this is the phase that I find most people in America are in. And the resistance phase is where you're under stress every single day. Your body is reacting uh, your hormonal system is reacting far more than it should. Uh, I read one study that said the average person has over 100 times the stressors that people did 100 years ago. So almost everybody can relate to this. And so we're in this continuous state of fight or flight. Go, go, go. You know, the American rat race, as you, as you may call it. Um, and then the final phase is the exhaustion phase. And the exhaustion phase is where too much is too much. You can only whip the horse so many times until it reaches that phase where it just can't go anymore. And most of the people who come into my office, most of the people that I encounter who've reached the breaking point, they've reached this exhaustion phase where their hormonal system has run down, their nutrition is uh, exhausted, and their body is struggling. And that's the phase when most people succumb to allergies and autoimmune disease and an illness of every single sort. And so in my opinion, the whole story of health is the story of this three phases of health and, and the energy in our bodies being depleted. And so as I began to study this, I became innately aware of how long that this debate has been going on. In America today, I read the other day that there's, um, according to the ICD-10 system of diagnosis, almost 90,000 different diagnoses you can get when you go to a doctor. Which for me, I became very frustrated as I began to collect my own uh, array of diagnosis. But in reality, there's only a few things that can really go wrong. And at the most basic level, only one thing can go wrong. And that is that the cells of your body are not functioning. The cells of your body, the mitochondria, are no longer able to produce energy. And it doesn't matter where that is. If they're muscle cells you're going to have muscle breakdown. If it's in your liver, you're going to have liver weakness. If it's in your hormonal system, you're going to have fatigue. And so I became very, very aware with it, aware of this. And I began to see it everywhere I looked around me. I could look at, literally look at people. And I used, to, I used to love to play the game. Let me look at someone and see what's wrong with them. And so this is the biggest thing that I see in America today. Like most of us are searching for this magic bullet. but they're really it's right in front of most of us. And that's what I do in my office is I help people see the obvious. 
This is so good because so many people are chasing health. And as you've said, have multiple diagnoses and they really don't know where to turn. But maybe instead of getting caught up in the latest fad diet or pill to pop, (laughs) we need to go back to basics. A hundred percent. And so the basics as I see them is it all comes down to cellular imaging. What is your cellular imaging? There's been many famous scientists who've talked about this. And, and even at the Weston A. Price Foundation, when I was looking through the various speakers, many of the speakers are talking about the cell voltage of the body. Even the famous um, Otto Warburg, who won a Nobel Prize, he, he showed that as the cellular voltage drops, you know, we become susceptible to various different infectious organisms. At a certain level, fungus shows up, at a certain level, bacteria, virus, parasites. And so with my patients, I say, like, this is the whole story. And so the first thing that I usually look at is the hormonal health. The hormonal health is our liver, our adrenals, uh, our hypothalamus, pituitary, pancreas, sex hormones, because this is where most people begin to wake up that something's wrong, that their hormonal health is dropping. And so with everybody, the first thing that I was introduced to, and I think this is the first place for most of us to start, is just becoming aware of the symptoms that your system is approaching this exhaustion phase. I know exactly what you're talking about because a friend of mine would tell me consistently, Hilda, often at the end of the day, I hit a wall. And what I do is I push through that wall. And you know what, Timothy, she ended up having some kind of mini stroke or something. And she realized she was pushing herself too hard. But that's exactly where many of us are, isn't it? A hundred percent. And so you look on every single corner in America and there's Starbucks, right? Or, or, or a fast food restaurant. And so the two things that most people do to push through the initial phases of fatigue is we use caffeine and sugar. And so you, you can become aware of it. Almost everybody, as they approach the exhaustion phase or they're in it, they're looking for some stimulant to help them just push through. I was recently camping also, and people even on this campground were like, when is the coffee going to be ready? (laughs) They were desperate for it. And I guess it's a symptom of what you're saying. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I would argue that most of America is in adrenal fatigue. And when you walk around, especially in the grocery store, for some reason, the the grocery store and probably the license bureau you see at the worst, but I walk around the grocery store and I look at what's in people's carts and then I look at their bodies. And this goes back to where you can see what's wrong with them. And so the biggest thing with fatigue, adrenal fatigue, is that people's cortisols are high and then they're low. But with high cortisol comes belly fat. And so I look around and the first thing that I see is that people are gaining weight around their bellies. And that's the first sign for most of us that something's something's not right. Um, we're gaining weight that we don't want. For adrenals, it tends to be around the belly. Also with sex hormones, uh, women tend to gain weight around their hips uh, and legs more. Uh, that weight that no matter what you do, it doesn't seem to go away, especially um, with thyroid. Hypothyroidism is just chronic in, in America today. And I see uh, so many people coming in and they say they're cold all the time. They're losing their hair. Um, and and they go to their doctor and this is where the frustrating thing happens. They go to the doctor and they get a blood test and they say, everything's normal. You know, your cortisol is within the normal range, your thyroid's within the normal range, your sex hormones are within the normal range, yet they're clearly in hormonal exhaustion. And why don't the doctors wake up to that? Like, why are they thinking it's something else? Well, and unfortunately we're stuck in this diagnosis paradigm and the diagnosis for most of these symptoms they don't, um, they don't recognize them until in the, they're in the disease state. And that's only when you've used up 90% of the function of those organs. And so, for example, your, your liver enzymes don't begin to rise until 80 to 90% of your liver function is compromised. They don't recognize adrenal until it becomes like Addison's disease, where you have complete adrenal failure. And so many people are walking around with these functional hormonal issues. 
and they're just not being picked up. Absolutely. So I'm sure a lot of folks listening right now are like, oh my gosh, he's describing me. <laughs> I'm always shooting or going for the caffeine and the sugar. I'm gaining weight around my hips if it's a woman, you know, or belly fat if it's a man, I guess. So what would you tell them? Well, you have to have some indicators that you look at, right? Otherwise, if, if we're not in some way analyzing our bodies, it's very hard to know where you're at, where you're going, where you've been. And, and you don't have to use a lot of them. And there's some great ones that are relatively inexpensive or free that you can use just to generally analyze where you're at. So let's, let's start with the whole cortisol issue. Cortisol and blood sugar are very closely related. So one of the best indicators, according to the World Health Organization on earth, like better than any blood test or any doctor's visit you can have, is simply your waist-hip ratio. How big is your waist compared to how big is your hips? So a lot of people will measure their belly fat compared to their hips and calculate the waist-hip ratio um, and use that as an analysis of where they're at. Another great one is just measuring your glucose. At any CVS or Walmart, you can pick up a glucometer for almost next to nothing and just see where your glucose is running. And so if you're gaining weight around your belly and your glucose is rising, your body is under stress, period. And so the first step is to cut back on processed foods. Uh, just cut back on sugars. Uh, and for many people, that's enough. But unfortunately, for many people, it's not. And the reason it's not is because they've used up all of their reserves. They've used up their nutritional, their mineral, uh, their fat reserves, and their, their, their gas tank is on empty. Uh, and so You're listening to the Wise Traditions podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause so you know now to, to recognize do. our sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I think this is going to resonate with a lot of people. Coming up, Timothy talks about how thinking of the elements, earth, air, fire, and water, can help us better optimize our health and avoid exhaustion. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. New Trends Publishing. Go to NewTrendsPublishing.com for the latest and best health and diet books. These include Sally Fallon Morell's popular Nourishing Traditions Cookbook, along with her latest books, Nourishing Fats and Nourishing Diets. There's also a Nourishing Traditions Cookbook for Children. Have you seen this yet? The kids in your family will love this spiral-bound, fully illustrated version of Nourishing Traditions. They'll learn to make everything from crispy nuts to friendly ferments. It's available at bookstores, online booksellers, and of course, at NewTrendsPublishing.com. And with holidays approaching, you should consider buying a group of books. Case orders are 50% off at NewTrendsPublishing.com. And Ancestral Supplements. Grass-fed colostrum by Ancestral Supplements. There are many ancestral records of praise given for colostrum throughout history. For thousands of years, Ayurvedic practitioners have used colostrum for its healing benefits. And in India, cows are still considered sacred animals. Hieroglyphic texts show that colostrum was used by the ancient Egyptians as well. Every mammal's birthright is to receive colostrum as our first food. Colostrum, which is mother's first milk, is the fundamental nourishment that provides all the essentials to thrive as a healthy animal in nature. It is loaded with immune and growth factors and protective proteins. It is not only essential to mammals in the wild, but it also helps us build and maintain a robust immune system and supports gut health, growth, and repair. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. You're saying the first step is to have some analysis, do some testing so you can know where you are. Correct. So here's, let me name like five or six tests that we do in our office. So I already mentioned belly fat and glucose, right? Yeah. Another one is blood pressure. Um, blood pressure, both laying and standing. So almost anyone can buy a blood pressure cuff. If your body is in fatigue, your blood pressure is, is not going to rise when you stand up. If you have healthy adrenal function, if you're not in the exhaustion phase, 
when you stand up, your blood pressure should go up. So if your blood pressure is 120 over 80, it should go up to 130 when you stand up. If your blood pressure drops, then chances are you're deep into that exhaustion phase. Another way of sensing this is a lot of people, when they stand up too quickly, they get lightheaded or dizzy. Um, and that's basically your adrenal glands aren't able to regulate the vasoconstriction of your blood vessels. And so you get that lightheadedness for about three or four seconds. Another test that we do with a lot of people is simply body temperature. Um, women, when they enter thyroid fatigue, one of the first things that happens is their body temperature begins to drop. And so women that are chronically cold, their body temperature is constantly in like the 97 range or, or even the 96 range. These are people that are well into the exhaustion phase of health. And these are the people that need to, at the very least, cut out processed food and sugar and, and get back to traditional less than a price type diet. Um, and then secondarily, follow it with, at the very least, the basic nutrition. And, and when I say the basic nutrition, I mean a multivitamin, whole food, essential fatty acids, and um, at the very least, some enzymes for, for digestion. When, when people do this, just doing literally the basics, I would say like 70 to 80% of people within two weeks, and, and I beg people when they come into my office, just give it two weeks. For two weeks, don't eat processed food and sugar and take the absolute basic nutrition. And almost, almost everybody within two weeks will begin to see some improvement in those symptoms. Oh, that must be so encouraging. And do you talk to them at all, Timothy, about getting more sunshine, for example? I understand Dr. Jack Cruz and other quantum physicians are recommending that for mitochondrial health. Oh, 100%. There's actually these things in the eyes that I, I find very interesting. They're called SCN cells. And, and they, they track that the light-sensitive cells in our eyes connect to every single endocrine gland in our body. And some researchers say that this is the predominant um, determinant of how well our endocrine system functions. And so as we begin to get into the conversation of like, how do you optimize hormonal function? How do you, how do you live a life that is in balance with not falling into hormonal fatigue? Like, I really love looking back at the elements. The elements are earth, air, water, and fire. And, and I wrote about this a lot in the book that I wrote, but Earth is minerals and nutrition. Air is oxygen. And in, in my office, we analyze people's oxygen systems, and we find that many people, because of poor fitness and, and a sedentary lifestyle, their, their cells are not getting enough oxygen. They're, they're stuck in this anaerobic phase where, where their bodies are burning sugar in a low oxygen environment. Uh, and so people need more oxygen, water, of course, and I really like Dr. Collins' work about the structured water and how important that is and how that, that, that regulates intracellular water. And then fire, and I look at fire as, as sunshine. Fire is our, um, is our connection with uh, light. And, and any one of the deficiencies of these elements, in the end, if you're living a lifestyle that's depleting any one of these elements faster than you're building them up, it is statistically guarantee that you will eventually reach exhaustion. I really like this approach to consider looking at the elements and making sure everything is in good order so that we're not depleting those kind of functions in our body. Yeah. And, and this is, I, I really believe this is 95% of health. So you can take those, I have people come to me all the time and they say, look, I have Hashimoto's. I have chronic fatigue, I have rheumatoid arthritis, you know, fill in the blank, I have Crohn's. And, and I just say, okay, no problem. I understand. Um, we're not going to treat your disease. We're just going to build up your cellular energy. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to analyze, and this is what we do in my office, which of these four elements is deficient. And if we can get people at the very least to be addressing these at some level, I have never had any condition that hasn't improved. Not even one thing I can think of in the last 15 years of practice. Because if your energy is improving, you're getting healthier, period. So let's review what test you would recommend for each element. So the biggest thing that is the problem in America today is 
most people have completely used up their nutritional mineral and fat reserves. This is verified by measuring vitamin D. It's verified by measuring mineral analysis. Back in 1976, the U.S. Senate said no matter how much food you eat, you're not going to get enough minerals. And, and the most obvious way to measure this is simply salivary pH. And so if the pH of your saliva is consistently below 7, it should be around 7.2. Um, and one of the amazing things that Weston A. Price found when he, he found people that are eating too much sugar is they started getting cavities. And the whole reason for that is because when you use up the nutritional reserves, the pH of your saliva drops and it breaks down your enamel. And so watching the pH of your saliva is an amazing way to see very, very, very affordably. In general, have you reached that exhaustion phase of your nutritional reserves? And then what about oxygen? And with oxygen, um, the easiest test that I do on every new patient is I say, okay, hold your breath right now. Don't take a deep breath in, but just stop breathing. And um, if you cannot hold your breath for 30 seconds, then you are in um, what we call acidosis. Your body's mitochondria have reverted so much to the anaerobic, low oxygen, fight or flight phase that the CO2 levels of your body have built up, which creates acidosis in the body. And this is so connected with so many things, especially chronic pain. But um, if you can't hold your breath for 30 seconds, then your body is in a state of acidosis. And really, you should be able to hold it for a minute. Um, and then there's also ways that we analyze this with exercise. The, the test that I beg people to do is the MAF test, M-A-F, Mitochondrial Assessment of Function, and, and simply to spend a little time once or twice a month and go out and exercise at, at their aerobic max. And there's tons of formulas for calculating this. The easiest one that Dr. Phil Maffetone described was take 180 minus your age. And so I'm a 40 year old male. And so 180 minus my age is 140 beats per minute. So I'll go out and I'll spend 30 minutes and I'll exercise at 140 beats a minute. And I'll see how long it takes me or how, long, how far I can go in 30 minutes. Without getting fatigued? Not only not getting fatigued, so that, that's not even really the assessment, is ah. the, the assessment is that you should be able, fatigue, of course, is always, always probably the most important symptom. This should be getting better and better. And so for most people that are healthy, they should be able to go for 30 minutes. And over the years, it should be getting better. If all of a sudden you at 140 beats a minute, for 30 minutes, you can go 30% less than you were two or three months ago, then what it means, that means that you've reached the exhaustion phase and that you need to reduce the stress in your life. You're eating, eating too much sugar or you're not getting enough nutrition or you need to back off on some uh, work commitment. But analyzing the body's level of stress and analyzing where you're at with this, this exhaustion um, phase of health is, in my opinion, the most important thing that any of us can do. And again, this, the most simple things that we can do is not fall into the exhaustion phase. Absolutely. And so there are two more elements. Can you tell us which tests you recommend for those? Sure. So we talked about earth, we talked about air. Water is a little bit more tricky. And uh, I, I know many people at the West Knight Price Foundation and the person who I just love and adore his books is Dr. Colin. Um, and he wrote Human Heart, Cosmic Heart. And he described in such poetic words on how having structured zones in our body and our arterial system is essential for the movement of blood and oxygen. But as we become stressed, we lose water from the inside of our cells, basically. And so to, to measure this, almost any good bioimpedance scale, and there's a lot of them out there, will measure intra and extracellular water. And so a healthy person is going to have 60% of their water inside their cells, okay? Because as their cells begin to break down and they begin to shrink and dehydrate and they lose those, those structured zones of water inside their cells, um, you get more extracellular water. And so when someone comes in and, and 
it's not a big scale. So 60 is like super healthy. You're doing great. If you have 50% of the water inside your cells, you're extremely sick. And so when someone comes in and they have 50% or 52% of the water inside their cells, I know that they are dehydrated inside their cells. What many doctors will say is just drink more water. But unfortunately, the story is so much deeper and these, these elements, they interrelate in such a way, like you can't get enough water inside your cells if you're deficient in minerals or fats, or you're not moving enough, or your lymph system's not working. But one of the things that I, I really have found for creating extreme mitochondrial function is to drink good water, right? So first that means no chlorine and fluoride, but I really believe in structured water uh, and, and drinking water that has been energized Oh, that's fascinating. And I wish we had time to go deeply into that, but we will put a link in the show notes to Dr. Cowan's books and other resources on that subject because that is huge. Oh, it's huge. But you're so right. So let's hit the last element now. So with the fire Fire. element, absolutely. So fire can mean a lot of things, but to me, it means first sunshine. Getting enough sunshine. I mean, the sun is the source of all energy on earth. I don't care where you think you're getting your energy, it all originates from the sun. So all plant life, if there's their energy from the sun, even oil and coal originated from plant life, which came from the sun. And, and our bodies at, at the deepest atomic level are simply light. And so when people become deficient in light in their body, they become sick. And so there are several ways of checking this. The most basic one is simply to measure your vitamin D levels. There's so many people, Mercola does so much good research in describing all of the, all of the issues that, that show up with not enough vitamin D, everything from dementia to depression, to low energy, to low immune system, to cancer, but getting enough vitamin D is essential. And, and not just, unfortunately, I live in the Northern climate. And so it's impossible to get enough light at this part of the country. And so we need to get what we call stored sunshine. And the only way to get stored sunshine, and I'm sure your, your listeners are very aware of this, if you can't get the sunshine directly as your body is using cholesterol and nutrients to convert it, then you have to consume stored sunshine. And when I think of something like cod liver oil, I think that's like stored sunshine. It's, it's fish or, or livers. Most of the sunshine or the vitamin D is stored in the liver. And so when we consume especially liver, but healthy sources of fat. We're literally consuming stored light and um, getting this, this working. It's just one of the basics. Like when people come to me and they're sick and I say, don't even worry about anything. Let's just, let's get your nutrition and your minerals and your vitamin D right first. And then we can look at all the rest of the stuff. And oh my gosh, as a chiropractor, yeah, you know, I think what chiropractic is doing when you get adjusted is is it's opening up the energetic channels of the body. And so I I look at this as part of the fire element as well as the transmission of energy through the body. But um, it's so easy. And this is what we're going to talk about at the conference. It's so easy to look at each one of these elements and and in a very easy to understand way, you can look and say, am I deficient in this element? Yes or no. And we're going to talk about at the seminar, simple ways simply to make sure that these things are right. And then from there, there's, that's going to take care of a minimum of 80% of all of your health issues. And then from there, you can just tweak it. But, but before, you, before you do this, it's difficult, if not impossible, to actually regain health. Wow. Well, this has been amazing. I know it's going to be really exciting for everyone to hear you expound on these ideas at the conference. So thank you for your time today, Timothy. I have one final question. If the listener could do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? The thing that I tell people the most in my office is do not eat processed foods uh, and avoid all sugar. And, and, And that's what Dr. Price found in his original work is if you're eating refined carbohydrates and sugar, then good luck because It's very difficult, if not impossible, to regain your health. Absolutely. We couldn't agree more. So thank you again for your time, and we'll see you in Dallas in November. I so look forward to it. Thank you so much.
Our guest today was Dr. Timothy Weeks. For more from Timothy, check out his website, wholebodyhealth.org. And come to our Wise Traditions Conference this November, where Timothy will be speaking. You can find me on Instagram at Holistic Hilda and on my new YouTube channel, Holistic Hilda, as well. For the show notes for this and every episode of the Wise Traditions Podcast, go to our website, westonaprice.org, and check out the podcast page. And that's it. Thanks for listening, everybody, and see you soon. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice. <laughs>